mother and father from Nigeria, they came to the UK in the 1950s. In 62, they went back to Nigeria and my mother and father lost contact with me. I was brought up in a children's home. Initially, I cried a lot. When I got to 12, I realised I had to be self-sufficient. But within me, there was enough to survive. I built on that surviving to thrive. I had this mindset that enabled fear to work for me. For some people, fear holds them down. They can't move. But fear released me so that I didn't die. I joined the army in 75 and I met a guy called Sergeant Ian McKenzie. He was the athletic officer in my very first unit. He was the one who saw in my sports that I had potential. He also logged all my successes and told everybody about it. All of a sudden, I was getting positive affirmation, not just from him, but also my colleagues and peers in the army base. The training is arduous, it's endurance-based, it's speed-based. There was discipline, and I needed discipline. The army's not for everybody, but it was my cup of tea. I spent four years getting ready for the Olympic Games. It's Hollywood. They do things large, brash, big, bold, and in Technicolor. I was a young man, 25 years of age. I'd never, ever crossed a pond before. Moonwalking everywhere. You've got the jetpack man flying in. It was just crazy. And here I was, in the middle of it. I'm an English boy, fish and chips. It was far out. Todd Bennett, Phil Brown, Gary Cook, and I'd squeeze myself into that team in 1984. We're real great friends, real great colleagues, real great competitors. So with that sort of fraternity, you learn to love one another. My mouth goes dry, butterflies in my stomach. I'm bubbling, I'm frightened. BAM! Before I know, I'm exploding at my blocks. The first 60 metres, I'm giving it all that I've got. It's a sprint. I'm listening to my stride. I kick in that turbocharger. I go into that second bend. I notice now that I'm closing down on some competitors. My legs are going wobbly and I'm flowing in. And I see Gary and Gary presents his hand and Gary recognises I'm spent. Gary Cook, he was a school teacher. He's disciplined enough to stay in his lane for that, the first 100 metres of that second leg. I look over the high jump pit. I see Gary flowing down the back straight. Gary's four. We're in great shape. Todd gets it. The horns of Bennett come out of his head as he grits his teeth. Todd was very, very small. People always used to say to him, yeah, you're really, really good, but can you hack it with the big boys? I always felt that Todd had something to prove and proved it by beating the big boys. Todd does his bit. Bill Brown was a really serious, philosophical type athlete who had no interest in athletics. Who's he? Is he good? What time does he run? Phil, he's the American champion. Oh, good. What time does he run? With his nostrils flaring and his arms flailing, Phil makes the break and then goes past the Nigeria in the last 100 metres. We are Olympic silver medalists. It was my moment where I became 
a world-class performer on the international stage. It was a family. We were great friends. I was just a small kid from a children's home who used to get in trouble at school. And here I am, actually accepting this on behalf of the country. And to look at that flag and think, this is because of us. It was awesome.